elegance and dynamism of a coupe with the comfort and functionality of a saloon. This car, though, was the first to perfect it, the Mercedes CLS class. It's been around since 2004, with this second generation version launched in 2011, before being further perfected in the improved form we're going to look at here. As inventor of the original motor car, Mercedes makes a point of constantly trying to reinvent it. Whether the initiative is a gullwing door or a groundbreaking safety system, the chances are that you saw it first with a three-pointed star on its bonnet. The Stuttgart maker hasn't been quite so successful in pioneering new market niches, but one exception has been the contradictory sounding concept of the four-door coupe. When the original version of this CLS model first introduced this idea, the result was exactly the kind of full executive segment car you wouldn't have expected this brand to bring us. Attention grabbing, extrovert, cool and trendy, prioritizing form over function. It may have been very much E-Class based, but this was very definitely an E-Class on an evening out. Rival brands hurried to emulate the concept, either with coupe style rear styling for their conventional executive saloons like Jaguar's XF, or with standalone models that matched familiar luxury underpinnings with swoopier bodywork like BMW's 5 Series GT and Audi's A7 Sportback. Volkswagen even replicated the thinking behind this Mercedes in cheaper form with their Passat CC. Many, though, felt the original still to be the best, and over 170,000 Mark I CLS models were sold before the introduction of a new generation E-Class range in 2009 paved the way for this second generation CLS class model a couple of years later. Time and technology moves on though, and by mid-2014 the CLS was facing tougher competition as rivals sharpened up their acts. By now, the Stuttgart brand had further committed to the four-door coupe concept by introducing the smaller A-class based CLA-class model in 2012, and more technology was needed to distance this CLS from its more compact showroom stablemate. Greater emphasis was required too if this car was to keep pace with other German premium brands. Hence the introduction of the revised second generation model we're going to look at here. Let's check it out. As before with this car, the driving experience is certainly more executive saloon than sports coupe, but don't despair. Mercedes haven't simply draped their efficient but rather clinical E-Class saloon in a fetching off the shoulder number. For a start, this feels more of a driver's car before you even go anywhere. And not only because the CLS's sweeping looks give an impression of power even before you've started the engine. The cabin allows you to sit lower than you would in a conventional plush saloon. 18 millimeters lower than an E-Class, and the controls cocoon you nicely at the wheel in front of instrumentation dominated by a three-dimensional TFT display in the middle of the speedometer. On the road, the exact CLS experience you get will depend on whether you opt for a version with standard suspension or one with the extra cost Airmatic air suspended setup. The basic steel spring system actually offers a very good blend of ride comfort and body control. On specifying your car, you can have this direct control suspension in either softer comfort or tauter sport guises. Paying extra for Airmatic though really gives you the full CLS experience. Here the ride can adjust itself to the way the car has been driven, reducing body roll if you're at speed on twisty roads, but softening up the suspension and lowering the body if it senses that you're racking up the motorway mileage that really represents this car's comfort zone. In the Airmatic Comfort setting, it'll waft you along as if on a magic carpet. Switch to Sport and there's still a supple ride, but suddenly it's matched to a sharper set of responses. Sharp enough to outpoint rival BMW 5 Series GT and Audi A7 Sportback models? I'd say so. Sharp enough to create in this car an out-and-out -out sports saloon? Well, that's more debatable. But at the end of the day, all it really needs to do to satisfy potential buyers is be a little bit sharper and more direct in its responses than 
a comparable Mercedes E-Class, which it is. Decent grip helps here too, though in this market we don't get a version with Mercedes 4MATIC part-time four-wheel drive system. There's still plenty of traction out of slower corners in all but the nastiest conditions. When the weather does turn nasty, you'll appreciate all manner of electronic cleverness. The way, for example, that the brake discs wipe themselves dry when you activate the windscreen wipers, so they'll be super effective when you need them. But that's just the start. Depending on the spec you choose, this car can see in the dark, park itself, read and display speed limit signs as you pass them, stop drowsy drivers from drifting out of lane, and warn you of a car in your overtaking blind spot, and brake to avoid it, and also slam on the anchors if you don't to help you get around a sudden stationary motorway queue. But it's the standard multi-beam LED headlamps that I think I like most. These are made up of 24 individual LED units, dimmable in an astonishing 255 stages and controlled by a stereo camera mounted in the windscreen that also receives information about approaching road conditions from the sat nav system. The lights can stay in permanent main beam mode while adjusting their beam length to ensure that oncoming traffic isn't dazzled. They also include an advanced cornering feature that allows the light beam to swivel in anticipation of an approaching bend. And on roundabouts, the headlamps also activate left and right hand cornering modes so that both edges of the road are illuminated. And that's all very 21st century. Time to talk about engines. All the ones on offer are reasonably pokey, even those of the two mainstream Bluetech diesel variants that almost all CLS customers choose. The entry-level 2.1-litre four-cylinder unit power plant has been cleaned up and detuned from 204 brake horsepower to 177 brake horsepower. Hence the badging change in this revised Mark II model from CLS 250 CDI to CLS 220 Bluetech. It's still quite acceptably rapid though, 400 newton meters of torque, enough to deal with the 0-62 sprint in 8.5 seconds, and that's en route to 140 miles per hour. Onto the six cylinder diesel option, the CLS 350 Bluetech model I'm driving here. This power plant arguably suits this car much better with 258 brake horsepower on tap, and more importantly, over 50% more pulling power that wafts you to 62 miles per hour in just 6.6 .6 seconds, and would demolish a long autobahn trip hovering at or near its 152 mile per hour maximum. One of the key reasons for stretching to this variant though lies not with its extra grunt, but with its gearbox. This is the only one of the improved second generation CLS class models that gets the latest auto transmission Mercedes has developed for this car, a 9G Tronic 9 speed unit. It's more efficient than the seven speed auto boxes used elsewhere in the range and slightly smoother shifting too, even if you play with the shift paddles behind the revised smarter steering wheel. Once the novelty has worn off though, you're unlikely to want to use them very much since this transmission still doesn't really respond fast enough for especially focused driving, which is why, like I'm doing here, you'll quickly just leave the box to effortlessly slur its way through the ratio a transmission that doesn't effortlessly slur its way through the ratios is the AMG DCT 7-speed box that's fitted to the flagship CLS class model, the storming V8-powered flagship CLS 63 AMG S model. Here, the ratio changes are delivered with rifle crack force, and there are four individual driving modes and a race start function for Grand Prix style getaways. Now, the S reference in this model's title designates the fact that its throaty V8 has here been operated to 585 brake horsepower. That and an astonishing 8. 100 newton meters of torque is enough to demolish the 0 to 62 mile per hour sprint in just 4.1 seconds on the way to a maximum that wouldn't be very far off 200 miles per hour were it not for the fact that a spoil sport speed limiter cuts in at 155 miles per hour. If you can't quite stretch to the exalted price point of the CLS 63 AMG S variant, then an alternative option that's nearly as desirable is the other minority interest petrol power derivative in the range, the 333 brake horsepower CLS 400 model. 
Here, the rest to 62 mile per hour sprint time occupies 5.3 seconds on the road to a maximum speed that also has to be limited at 155 miles per hour. Not everyone was a fan of the looks of the original CLS class model, but those who liked it really loved it. And most of those who didn't were pretty much converted by the end of the Mark I version's production run in 2010. Replicating something like that wasn't going to be easy, but stylist Gordon Wagner didn't shy away from controversy with this Mark II replacement. Where the look of the first generation design could have been Italian or possibly American, but was anything but German. This one seems far more Teutonic. Powerfully pretty with a distinctive and muscular sports car like shoulder line and flared rear wheel arches that Mercedes say are intended to resemble the powerful thighs of a feline predator waiting to pounce. Whether you go with that or not, this car certainly has a road presence and an air of substance. Now the front end has been slightly tweaked with this revised Mark II model thanks to a smarter front bumper and grille design. It's still dominated by LED headlamps though, and this time round they're of a more advanced multi-beam design that uses four control units that calculate the ideal light pattern 100 times per second. The 24 high performance LEDs in each precision module twinkle at you as you pause to admire this futuristic shape, from each angle sensing something different from the designer's pen. Now they even illuminate with a friendly blue light when the vehicle is opened. Ultimately though, it's true that the overall look of the car won't be to everyone's taste. It's important to remember that this car isn't designed for everyone, just a lucky few. As ever, there's a choice of either a boosted four-door coupe body style or the avant-garde shooting brake estate version. Either way, under the skin, the CLS remains essentially a conventional Mercedes E-Class executive model beneath sweeping bodywork that leaves it slightly lower and longer. In Mark II guys, its proportions stayed much the same as before. The original version's distinctive long bonnet, narrow look side windows and dynamic roof lines sweeping back towards the rear all being carried over. Yet, at the same time, Mercedes changed quite a lot for this second generation version. These improvements relating not only to style but also to substance. Many of the panels on the Mark II CLS are crafted from aluminium, not just to copy the rival Audi A7 Sportsback, but primarily to achieve the lightness necessary for this car to be faster yet more frugal than its predecessor. Actually, as it happens, it's almost exactly the same weight as the original 2004 vintage version. But given that this second generation model is not only longer and wider, but also packed with extra high-tech equipment, that's no mean feat. Significant in their contribution here have been the frameless aluminium doors, a full 24 kilograms less hefty than those of the Mark I model, which means they can be opened and closed more easily, especially on an incline. With all this going on outside, you could perhaps have excused Mercedes for taking the easy way out and simply sticking an E-Class interior into the cabin. In the first generation CLS, they probably should have done just that, for the vast plank of wood that ran across its dashboard wasn't the car's most appealing feature. Here though, a much classier result has been achieved that fully justifies the high prices being asked. A cabin even the crassest Bulgarian wouldn't be able to ruin with extrovert choices from the endless options list. From the immaculately hand-stitched leather dash top to the center analog clock that's borrowed from the S-Class and the matte silver inlays around the air vents, everything in the wraparound cockpit is all beautifully crafted. A very high-end place to be and fantastically comfortable too, even if you don't opt for the sumptuous dynamic multi-contour seats with their inbuilt massage function. I'd advise you to try them though. Improvements to this revised Mark II model include this clearer 8-inch command online infotainment screen and the smarter leather-stitched multifunction steering wheel through which you view the usual crystal clear instrument cluster. 
For backseat passengers in the original first generation CLS, things weren't quite so nice. Those swooping headlines had to tell somewhere. And though headroom in this Mark II model is still of course restricted in comparison to the boxier E-Class saloon, you don't notice it so much thanks to the slightly wider cabin with its sculpted seats and extra legroom. Bottom line is that it's cosy without being cramped. True, well-to-do family motorists may be a little disappointed to find that this remains a strict four-seater. This chunky transmission tunnel with its roller shutter storage compartment dividing the two rear seats. Still, at least getting in and out is easier thanks to the larger doors. And as for luggage space, well, Mercedes is well aware that this car's closest competition comes from Audi's A7 Sportback and BMW's 5 Series GT models. Hence the availability I mentioned earlier of a shooting brake estate version to complement this booted model. Now this four door offers 475 litres of space, a total you can improve if you've paid extra for a split folding rear backrest. You can also make more of it if you specify a 55 litre easy pack boot box which folds away under the parcel shelf and can be extended to various depths. If that's not enough then the shooting brake model offers 590 litres or 1550 litres with the backrests folded flat. Once you've chosen your CLS and made a few careful choices from the options list, it's likely that you'll be paying somewhere in the 45,000 to 55,000 pound bracket for mainstream models. For the V8 petrol powered 63 AMG S version, you'll be paying in the 85,000 to 90,000 pound bracket depending on the options you specify. Provided you choose one of the diesels or the V8 AMG model, there's the option of either a four door body style or for a premium of around 1,500 pounds a stylish shooting brake estate variant. Most will want a diesel, probably the efficient entry-level four-cylinder CLS 220 Bluetech model. Though personally, I'd be tempted to try and find the necessary £3,500 premium to get myself the six-cylinder CLS 350 Bluetech diesel variant that I've been trying here. It's not only pokier, but it has the preferable higher tech 9G Tronic Plus 9-speed auto gearbox fitted, rather than the older 7-speed automatic transmission setup you'll find on all other variants in the range. On to the value proposition all that represents. Let's start with the Mercedes perspective uh, on pricing. Now underneath this CLS class design lie virtually all the underpinnings of the brand's more conventional E-class model. Now the premium for this car's more fashionable approach is a little difficult to quantify since specifications vary between the two model lineups. Now an E-Class saloon in 220 blue tech diesel spec could save you up to around £12,000 on a mechanically similar CLS 220 blue tech variant. Now go for this CLS 350 blue tech derivative though and the price gap to a comparable E350 blue tech model narrows to around eight and a half thousand pounds. Now if you're looking at the flagship CLS 63 AMG S V8 petrol version, the difference to a directly comparable E-Class model narrows to no more than about £2,500. In reality though, very few potential CLS class customers will be cross shopping against the E-Class. Instead, they'll be searching the full-sized executive segment for cars that add a bit of design flair to their everyday commuting lives. BMW's 5 Series Gran Turismo model sets out to try and do that. And a 520D variant could save you over £8,000 over a comparable CLS 220 Bluetech. While a 530D model would save you around £3,000 over this equivalent CLS 350 Bluetech derivative. It's not a pretty thing though and the engines on offer are much less efficient than those in the Mercedes. So it will be pricier to tax. A better alternative, we think, is Audi's A7 Sportback. Like the BMW, this is a five-door only design, but unlike the 5 Series, there's no variant offered to compete with an entry-level four-cylinder CLS 220 Bluetech. Instead, Audi has chosen to focus on competing with the six-cylinder petrol and diesel CLS models. And the A7 range can match these almost directly on price and efficiency. 
You just have to like the rather soulless clinical style that characterizes the A7. If you don't, the final direct CLS alternative I'd put your way is Maserati's lovely Ghibli Saloon. No, it's not really a four-door coupe in the style of this Mercedes, but it is a very lovely and charismatic thing that sells at bang-on CLS money. Unfortunately, it can't match CLS standards of efficiency, and for many business buyers, that could be crucial. And if, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a CLS class model that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Mercedes has been with the standard spec. The answer to that is that you should find this car to be as well equipped as the asking price would lead you to expect. Now, all models get plush AMG line trim, which means you can expect to find 19-inch AMG alloy wheels and AMG body styling for the front and rear aprons that you'll also find on the side skirts, emphasizing the direct control sports tune suspension. Now, there's also the clever Parktronic Active Parking Assist system, and best of all, the brand's clever multi-beam LED intelligent light system is also included. Here, you get headlamps that don't dazzle oncoming road users at night and not only turn with the bends and roundabouts, but communicate with the satellite navigation system to anticipate them. And that satellite navigation system, standard two, a hard disk drive setup with a 3D map display. Now, it comes as part of an advanced command online infotainment setup accessed via a now larger eight inch color screen. Now, this is your access point for Bluetooth connectivity, the DAB radio tuner, a CD or DVD player, and a 10 gig music register. Now, all of it operable via either switchgear or Linguatronic voice control. Plus, the online part of the package enables you to create in your car a WLAN, that's a wireless local area network hotspot. And this will allow you to surf the internet and access social media like Facebook and Mercedes-Benz apps to cover things like weather forecasts. Now, there's also Google Local Search with Street View and Panoramio functionality. Plus, there's an integrated media interface to connect in an iPad or an iPhone, and you can play back from either an SD card, a USB stick, or a CD or DVD. Command Online is also your entry point for the clever Mercedes Connect Me package of services. Now this has its own SIM card fitted into the vehicle and gives owners a whole range of options that run from being able to remotely check the fuel remaining in their car's fuel tank from a smartphone when out and about, to summoning the emergency services in the event of a breakdown or an accident. Other thoughtful standard niceties include leather upholstery, black ash wood trim, an ambient lighting system, heated front seats, cruise control with a speed limiter and sports pedals in brushed stainless steel. And if you want to go further, options include a premium pack that gives you an electric sunroof, a seat memory package, a reversing camera and the split folding rear seats that unfortunately aren't standard on the four-door version. Now, you could also look at the Premium Plus pack that further adds Keyless Go and a 14-inch Harman Kardon Logic 7 surround sound system. Going even further than that down the audio route means specifying the thumping Bang & Olufsen Biosound AMG system. Other separate extra cost features worthy of your consideration include the dynamic multi-contour seat package with seats that adjust to the corners, a traffic sign assist feature that will picture road signs as you pass them and display them on the dash, and a 360 degree camera system that uses four networked cameras to give you a bird's eye view of your immediate surroundings when you're parking. Now, you should also certainly consider the Airmatic semi-active air suspension option that will bring you magic carpet style ride quality. Now the shooting brake estate model gets this setup as standard at the rear with self-leveling, but the full all-round airmatic package really completes the car. Now, if you are looking at a shooting brake variant, there's also a particularly expensive option. Now, if you can afford it, for an extra fee that'll set you back nearly 
10% of the cost of the whole car, you could decide to have the load space floor trimmed in lovely designo open pour American cherry wood. Do that and I'm guessing you won't be using your car for dogs or trips to the dump. Back in everyday reality, safety kit includes all the usual things you'd expect. So dual stage airbags for driver and front passenger, side bags in the front seats, a pelvis bag and a knee bag for the driver and window bags to cover all occupants. There are also ISOFIX child seat fastenings and neck pro anti-whiplash head restraints. Now to try and ensure that none of this stuff is ever needed, you do of course get the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. There is also ABS with brake assist and an adaptive braking system that flashes the brake lights in emergency stops and keeps the discs dry in wet weather. Plus a hill start assist function that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And you also get a standard attention assist system that profiles you in the first few minutes of every journey, then continues measuring your responses, warning you to stop for a break if control reactions suggest you're getting a little drowsy. More advanced standard features include pre-safe technology that braces the car for a crash by tensioning the seatbelts and closing the windows. Plus, across the range, this CLS gives you what Mercedes calls Collision Prevention Assist Plus, which can help prevent rear-end collisions, if necessary, through autonomous braking. Now, to build on that, an optional pre-safe plus system has also been developed for this car, which will warn you of such imminent rear-end collisions and brake the car to reduce whiplash on impact. That pre-safe plus setup is part of a package of six extra cost safety elements borrowed from Mercedes larger S-Class saloon for use in this car. Now these are bundled together in what the brand calls its driving assistance package. The other five features start with BAS plus with cross traffic assist, a clever system which prompts you to brake in hazardous situations and adds extra brake pressure if you're too tentative. Also working at junctions and roundabouts to avoid possible collisions from the side. Now also included is a pre-safe brake system that can automatically slow the car if you don't respond when a pedestrian strays into your path. Next there's active lane keeping assist there to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway and active blind spot assist to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another driver. Cleverest of all, perhaps, is the motorway safety peace of mind you'll get from the Distronic Plus with steering assist and stop and go pilot set up much, much more than just cruise control. It'll keep you steering straight for a start and automatically maintain a safe distance to the traffic ahead, even seamlessly stopping and starting the car should you come across a tailback. The Federal Office of Statistics reckons that the driver of a Mercedes is 9.6% less likely to have an accident than the driver of a car of another brand. And looking at what's on offer here, you can begin to see why. Would we ever have imagined a few years ago that an executive segment luxury car of this kind would be able to manage better returns than you'd get from a 1.6 litre Ford Fiesta? Almost certainly not. And yet that's exactly what this CLS class model can now manage in entry level CLS 220 Blue Tech diesel guys. It delivers 56.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's about 10% better than a more feebly performing rival BMW 5 Series GT520D can manage. Even this six-cylinder CLS 350 Bluetech diesel variant is pretty frugal, thanks to its more efficient 9G Tronic Auto gearbox, able to return 52.3 miles per gallon and 142 grams per kilometer of CO2. That's not quite as good as the return you'd get from a rival Audi S7 Sportback 3 liter TDI 272 PS model, but it's still pretty impressive for a 152 miles per hour Executive Express able to reach 62 miles per hour in just 6.6 .6 seconds. 
The reason why this car is so efficient uh, principally lie in four different areas. Lightweight aluminium construction, sleek wind cheating shape, uh, the efficient electromechanical power steering and the usual start stop system that cuts the engine at the lights or in traffic when you don't need it. But even all of that surely can't counteract the weight and thirst of a big petrol V6 or V8. Well, yes and no. Thanks to its more efficient bi-turbo V6 engines, the CLS 400 manages 38.7 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 170 grams per kilometer. Not bad, but what about the storming V8-powered CLS 63 AMG S flagship version? After all, those who bought the first generation V8-powered AMG CLS class model could hardly have offended Greenpeace further if they'd fitted a whaling harpoon gun to the bonnet. Now, this improved Mark II design still won't get you a place in their Christmas card list, but it does manage 28.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 231 grams per kilometer of CO2, which isn't bad for a 585 brake horsepower super saloon. On all the V6 and V8 models, you get the biggest 80 litre fuel tank fitted as standard, but with the entry level CLS 220 Blue Tech variant rather annoyingly, Mercedes has reduced the tank capacity to 59 litres. What else? Well, insurance. As you might expect, the fastest AMG version is a top of the shop Group 50, but the lesser CLSs are slightly more affordable in this respect. The CLS 220 Blue Tech is Group 43, this CLS 350 Blue Tech is Group 48, and the CLS 400 petrol model is Group 47. Expect residual values to be as strong as ever, which means that in three years you can expect your car to be worth around 56% of what you paid for it. Servicing costs should be affordable. Just one example of this is the way that oil change intervals on the gearbox have been more than doubled since the arrival of the second generation model. And the comprehensive three year warranty is built upon by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have your car serviced at a Mercedes Benz main dealer. Your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit is due. There's also a service care package that takes care of routine maintenance, spreading the cost of regular servicing, guaranteeing the price of parts and labor for up to four services and covering the cost of all recommended service items such as brake fluid, spark plugs, air filters, fuel Finters and screen wash. There wasn't much wrong with the original second generation CLS class model, so not too much needed to be done to fix it. The introduction of the class leadingly efficient CLS 220 Blue Tech version is probably the key change. A car of this kind that can manage over 56 miles per gallon in regular use and return under 130 grams per kilometer of CO2 will certainly be tempting for many executives. Doubtless it would be more efficient still if Mercedes had engineered that particular variant to take the other key development made for this revised Mark II model CLS class range, the 9G Tronic 9-speed auto gearbox. Unfortunately, provision of that is limited to the impressive six-cylinder CLS 350 Bluetech diesel version that we've been trying here. Otherwise, range highlights include the achingly clever multi-beam LED headlights, and the way the even more highly developed command online infotainment system gives you ultimate 21st century connectivity without having to resort to the options list in the way that you have to with rival competitors. Ultimately then, this is for self-made business people an appropriate reward for a lifetime's endeavor and a very complete car indeed, provided you can afford its significant price premium. Once upon a time, people like this could admire a Mercedes, aspire to ownership, or respect what it did, but they rarely formed an emotional bond with one. But then the CLS arrived and changed all that, as it still does.